In the previous two videos, we solved for the uncertainty in the position and uncertainty in the momentum for the particle in a box in a more rigorous mathematical way. Uh, so in this video, let's use those results to see if the particle in a box model system f obeys the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So for the uncertainty in position, sigma x, we showed that that equals L times the square root of 1 12th minus 1 over 2 n squared pi squared, n being the quantum number for the model system, which is some integer. And similarly, that for the uncertainty in momentum, we have h bar pi n over L. So there's an inverse relationship between the two. As the, box get, as the box gets larger, the uncertainty in position gets higher and the uncertainty in momentum gets smaller. And as the box gets smaller, the reverse happens. So those two seem to relate for changing the value of L. That's good. But how does it work for changing the value of N? So let's combine these two and see how that works. So the product of the uncertainties, sigma x times sigma p, equals, we have h bar pi n. We get an L on the numerator from position. We get an L on the denominator from momentum. And then this whole radicand tags along. But immediately, we see that we can cancel out those two L's. So the product of the uncertainties doesn't depend on L. That's good. This will be valid for all lengths of the box. But now we have this h bar pi n. And for the uncertainty principle to be obeyed, what we need is the product of these two uncertainties needs to be greater than or equal to h bar over 2. So that's just the general uncertainty principle. So these this product needs to be greater than or equal to h bar over 2 for all physical parameters, every value of L, every value of N, etc. So let's put this into a little bit more convenient form for determining if that's the case. Let's have sigma x sigma p equals, we're going to have an h bar over 2 on the outside and then we're going to pull into the radicand what we need to make this equivalent. We're going to have pi squared n squared to pull that pi n into the radicand. And we're going to have, no, oh, let's make that, make that a little bit better. We're going to have a 4 in there as well so we can have this 2 on the outside for pi squared n squared. And then the rest of that stays the same. So next we're going to distribute between these two terms and see what those two terms then become. So we have sigma x sigma p equals h bar over 2 <coughs> square root of, um, on the top we have pi squared n squared over 4 divided by 12, that gives us a 3 on the denominator. And then we have 4 pi squared n squared over 2 n squared pi squared, or pi squared n squared, whatever you prefer. So that cancels out to give us a 2. So our final result is <coughs> the product of the uncertainties equals this h bar over 2 times this constant. And the important thing is that this constant is greater than 1 for all n. So if we, the lowest n we can possibly have, we can see as n increases, we're going to get a larger and larger value in here. So it's obviously, if, it, if it's true for n equals 1, it's going to be, if this inequality is true for n equals 1, it's going to be true for all larger values of n. So let's just see. When n equals 1, this, this quantity, let's do a different color this whole quantity here that we've got in brackets, our sigma p, sigma x, sigma p, 
is going to equal about 1.28 h bar over 2 for n equals 1. So we indeed do obey the uncertainty principle. That's good. This is a mathematical description of how this uh, uncertainty principle manifests itself in mathematical systems. So it's not a property of measurement alone that this uncertainty has to follow the Heisenberg uncertainty principle it has to be greater than or equal to h bar over 2. This is an intrinsic mathematical property of how quantum mechanics works. Um, for every system we solve, this product of uncertainties will be greater than or equal to that minimum value of h bar over 2.